Welcome to Mana's Seal YouTube channel. The previous video link is on the description box or on the top right card. Volume 13 The Paladin of the Holy Kingdom. There was a world of darkness. She did not know what she was. She wanted to open her eyes, but she did not know what eyes were. She did not know what darkness of the world meant. She did not know why she was thinking of these things. She knew nothing. She was vanishing. She did not know what vanishing meant. But she was vanishing. However, suddenly, she felt like she was being pulled by something. From above, from below, from the left, from the right, from somewhere. The completed world was pulling her. A pitiful being who had been completed by the works of their friends. Someone who had sealed away all thoughts that there was a greater treasure than that. And then an explosion of white light dyed the world. There was a tremendous sense of loss. A sense of separation from a whole. Nibaraja blinked several times, seeking to return her unfocused field of vision to normal. She sensed that something had happened, but she could not remember anything about it. However, she ought to have been fighting demi-humans. What on earth had happened? That was a dangerous place. As she heard that calm voice, Nia narrowed her eyes and looked up with an abnormally keen gaze. It looked like darkness. It was not the darkness a child would fear, but the darkness which granted peace to those who were tired. It was the sorcerer King Ainzul Gaon. Be her, Majesty. Nia reflexively reached up to him, like a worried child reaching for her parents. Nia Baraja. Do not force yourself to move. Let me take care of this place and rest. Behind him, she could see the demi-humans frantically attacking the Sorcerer King, stabbing him with swords, hacking at him, punching him. However, the Sorcerer King completely ignored them. He spoke to her as though nothing was happening. The memory of Busser came to Nia's mind. The Sorcerer King reached into the sleeve of his robe and, after a brief delay, he withdrew a purple poisonous looking potion. Normally, potions were blue. Nia did not question the Sorcerer King, even as he poured that poisonous looking potion on her. What the Sorcerer King did must surely be correct. Reality turned out as she had imagined it. The purple potion that he poured on Nia's body, instantly healed all of her wounds. It would seem the Sorcerer Kingdom's potions were of a different color. Well it seems a full recovery will be a long way off, you should recover your energy before that what a pain. Tis. The militiamen are all dead, looks like there's a few left over there. In that case. The Sorcerer King turned to face the demi-humans as they attacked him from behind over and over again. There was fighting all over the city at this very moment, and someone was dying with every second that passed. However, in that moment Nia completely forgot about that, because her eyes were stolen by the glorious back of the Sorcerer King, who had risen to protect her. Her unease and worries about the demi-human army were completely gone. That was what Nia had longed for. So it was here all along. I see. Nia was certain that she had found the perfect answer to the doubts that she had been holding on to all this time. The Sorcerer King casually cast a spell. A dazzling stroke of electricity raced along the top of the city wall. It was apparently a spell called Chain Dragon Lightning. The demi-humans on the wall were swept away, so easily that it was hard to imagine there had been a life and death struggle here earlier. Did, Ihu, Defi, them, all. No, there were some people still fighting nearby, so I was trying not to catch them in it. However. Nap them. Ah, that's all of them. Next we have to deal with the idiots climbing up. White and magic wall of skeleton. A wall of bones suddenly sprang up on the outside of the city wall, where the demi-human forces were. While she could not see the other side because her vision was blocked, she could hear the demi-humans on the ladders wailing, followed by the sound of objects falling and hitting the ground hard. Now to take care of their forces which are already in formation. I sent some undead over there earlier, they'll deal with it soon enough. As he spoke, he took out another potion. It was completely different from the one just now, being stored in a beautiful, slender file. While she had no idea what the potion inside it could do, it looked like it must be a very valuable item. I, I'm fine, ye her majesty. Enough of that. I'm sorry I was late in saving you. The Sorcerer King shielded the upper halves of his eye sockets like he was being dazzled as he poured out the contents of the bottle. The sense of weakness she had been feeling since just now melted away. However, her body still felt heavy. She felt like something had been scraped away from herself, but matching it no, exceeding it was a warmth in the core of her body. She could get up like this. While her body still hurt so much that her tears had leaked out, she could not remain in such a disgraceful posture in front of the person who had come to save her. Stop, Miss Baraja. There's no need to force yourself to stand. While she wanted to get up, Nia obediently lay back as he pushed her shoulders down. Yes, like that. I'll get someone to carry you. You lot, over here. The Sorcerer King waved to what seemed to be militiamen. It was at this point that Nia realized that for the sake of expressing her gratitude, she had not yet asked a question which had to be asked. Your Majesty, will you be alright? 
You came to help us and use the mana you should have been saving to fight Jeldabiath. It's fine. When you think about it, it couldn't be helped considering that it was for the sake of saving you. Your Majesty. A weighty stone seemed to have fallen from her chest. I understand now. Hmm. What is it? The Sorcerer King waited for Nia's reply. I understand what justice is. Ah, so you found the justice that belongs to you. That's good. Is it protecting the weak or something? His voice was full of tenderness, and so Nia replied with confidence. Your Highness is justice. For a moment, the Sorcerer King froze. Hmm. I understand now. Your Highness is justice. Ah, is that so? You must be tired. Don't you think it would be better to rest? You'll think of strange things when you're tired. Surely you won't want to roll around on the bed and make weird noises after you calm down, right? I'm a little tired, but more importantly, my heart is cleared up. I am absolutely certain that your highness is justice. No, 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 I said so back then, but I'm not justice. Look, what they call justice ought to be something like protecting the weak is common sense, that kind of, uh, abstract concept, right? I mean, normally speaking. No. Justice without power is meaningless, but power like what Jaldabiath possesses is not justice either. Therefore, being strong, and using that strength to aid others is truly justice, in other words, you are the incarnation of justice, your majesty. As Nia's eyes went white while she spoke, the sorcerer king suddenly raised his hand, and then placed it over Nia's eyes like he was coaxing her to sleep. The pleasant coolness of his finger bones made Nia's cheeks relax. Ah. If you shout too loud, won't it make your wounds hurt? After this, we can slowly continue what you were talking about just now. Yes. Your majesty. She heard the sound of several footsteps, and by shifting her gaze, she saw the forms of paladins and militiamen approaching her. Your Highness. Thank you very much for coming here to help us. Don't mention it. As he answered, the Sorcerer King slowly rose to his feet. Nia felt lonely as he stood up and wanted to reach for the Sorcerer King's robe, but then she realized that doing so would be terribly shameful, and so she curbed herself. No, actually, maybe you should. Therefore, I hope you will take Squire Baraja to a safe place in order to show your gratitude. Well you can't see it from here, I've already sent the undead I made into the demi-human encampment, so it should be alright for you to stand down for a while. Your Majesty. Nia Baraja. And also, the people of this country. Let me handle the rest. I promise you that I will do my best to save the people of this city. The Sorcerer King floated lightly into the air. Also, there's one more thing. Can you help me move the bodies of those three demi-humans over there? They were strong foes, so I want to study them carefully. The three corpses to which the Sorcerer King pointed looked like they had once been very impressive demi-humans. Move them with their war gear. Don't worry about being rough with them, but do not misplace their equipment. I'll leave that to you. As he watched the Sorcerer King fly into the air, a paladin turned to Nia. Squire Nia Baraja, while we would like to carry you, the lack of materials for a stretcher makes things difficult. Can you stand? Yes, though it's difficult. Nia slowly got to her feet. Her legs were trembling, and they ached as soon as they took her weight. Nia leaned on a militiaman's shoulder and hung on tightly to him. Looking down from the city wall, the unit that was supposed to be defending the west gate was gone, and there were no bodies. The sound of clashing blades on the wind seemed to be coming from far away, so taking the shortest route down from the side tower ought to be fine. Nia sought the form of the Sorcerer King who had disappeared into the sky, and as she thought that it was a shame that she could not see him, Nia entered the side tower. As he greeted the demi-humans invading the city with attack spells from the air, Ains thought about the sequence of events which had transpired and wrinkled his non-existent brows. That was a huge mistake. The order was all wrong. I should have prioritized Nia Barajo over that annoying woman. Nia had died because he held remedios and was thus delayed in going to Nia's side. He had to use a high level one to resurrect Nia, because he was not sure how high level Nia was, and he was afraid of her turning to ash like the Elizabeth from back then. In truth, he had no idea whether the price of resurrecting Nia was justified by the benefits she could bring to Ains and Nazark. That said, since the plan to help Remedios and Indebtor to him had been a complete failure, he ought to at least try again with Nia, which was why he had chosen to resurrect her. However, would a wand of resurrection a 7th tier spell have been fine as well? It seems I was being too generous. Also, it'll take an hour before I can swap out this ring. Ains was looking at one of his eight rings, the one on his right thumb. It was the ring of one master. Said ring was an ultra-rare artifact dropped by a boss. Normally, only magic casters of the appropriate tradition would be able to use the spells stored within a wand. For instance, only a divine caster could use a wand imbued with the first tier divine spell light healing. If they could be used by magic casters of other traditions, then they would be staves, which were more expensive. That said, a patch had updated certain wands so they could be used by all players. 
Unfortunately, the wand imbued with the ninth tier spell True Resurrection that he had used to resurrect Nia was not one of them, and Ains would not be able to use it under normal circumstances. However, he could use it as long as he had this ring. Yet every time the ring was used, it only applied to one wand at a time, and he would have to wait an hour before he could change it out. That also carried the drawback of requiring mana to use, but it was still a very valuable item regardless. Due to its high rarity, very few people in the guild Ainzu Gown possessed it, and the one which Ains had was left to him by a man Mahatatsu when he had quit the game. Well, it doesn't look like I'll need to use that wand anywhere else, so I shouldn't let it bother me. Speaking of which, I just realized when I covered her eyes, it feels like she simply respects me. Given what she said, does that mean I've gained her trust? Yumu. I wonder what happened. Ains recalled Nia's reaction. Her gratitude sounded sincere, but at the same time it felt like she was glaring at me. Is it because her face is scary? How about recommending she wear sunglasses or something? Ains might have thought that, but of course he could not actually say it. In the carriage, she had mentioned being conscious of how scary her eyes had looked. If one encountered a lady with smelly armpits, how would they react when you said, you stink, and gave them a bottle of perfume? It feels like all the respect I've cultivated would vanish, and she would only resent me. In addition, Ains, Suzuki Satori, was not brave enough to say such things. Ains spotted a cluster of demi-humans nearby, and discharged an area of effect spell at the ground, slaughtering them all. The militiamen who had been facing them waved to him. Ains raised his arm as well by way of response. Originally, he had intended to just raise his hand, but there was a distance between them, so he put his arm up high in order for them to see him. That's right, it's the merciful sorcerer king, be grateful to me, speaking of which, does resurrection magic make people go mad or act weirdly? Compared to that, it would be better if she was just pumped up or on a buzz. Ains thought about Nia. It felt strange no matter how he thought about it. She had been perfectly normal when he had parted ways with her, but she had ended up like that after being brought back to life. Is she mad? Should I heal her with magic? It would be a little scary if it was a side effect of resurrection. I don't want to end up warping her personality as time passes. There had been a strange force in Nia's murderous eyes, an insane, ferocious gleam that frightened him. It's so bad that she mistook me for justice, huh? Some rest ought to help with that. Oh. Ains turned his gaze to the demi-human position. Half of it had already been destroyed, and so leaders were walking lazily among the fleeing demi-humans. Even that much was enough to send the demi-humans collapsing in droves from their instant death auras. The soul leaders who consumed their souls became stronger in turn. When soul leaders appeared in Yggdrasil, they were almost always level-appropriate encounters, so the chances of a player being downed by an instant death effect would only be one in a hundred or less. That was why this special ability of soul leaders rarely got the chance to see use. However, it was different this time. This was the perfect opportunity to show it off. Souls, ha, huh? oh no. I should have experimented with this. Ains suddenly landed. Then he used his ability to create mid-tier undead to craft a soul leader. Go. After he issued a mental command, the soul leader immediately began to move. At the same time, he sent an order to the soul leaders who were obliterating the demi-humans outside. It went. Leave some prey for the newly made soul leader. Undead created with corpses did not vanish with the passage of time. But why did they not vanish? If it's not because they're using the corpse as a medium, but the soul, does it mean that soul leaders which have eaten souls won't vanish? Well, even if I found the answer I wouldn't know where to apply it. Still, knowing is better than not knowing. He ascended into the sky once more and verified that the city was safe. Most of the demi-humans should have been wiped out by now, but he ought to be careful, just in case. Mew, that annoying woman is there. Ignore her, ignore her. Ains looked away from Remedios and flew elsewhere. As Ains flew, he could hear cheers coming from below him, and Ains responded with a wave of the hand. After verifying that there were no more demi-humans that the fighting had ended, Ains began making his way to the war room. He would need a lot of time to return to Nazareth and take care of all sorts of annoying meetings. I need to handle this properly. The crushing surge of uneasiness flooded into him, and then his emotion suppression calmed him down. The only thing that remained was a chilly sensation in his heart. I need to use message to tell Demiurge to meet me in Nazareth. 